Welcome to this video looking at storage migration with Hyper-V3 running on Windows Server 2012. I decided to produce this video because I had a few questions uh, about storage migration and even though I did a, a shared nothing live migration video I thought it might be quite interesting just to show how we could maybe use the storage migration features either if we're consolidating LUNs within a cluster or if we're moving from a standalone environment to a clustered environment. So at the moment you can actually see that I have two Hyper-V servers, one called HV1, the second one called HV2. In addition, I've already built my cluster configuration. So the cluster configuration um, is a fairly standard build um, and I've created some clustered shared volumes which we'll see shortly. Other than that I don't have any virtual machines which are listed as being highly available so it's just an, an empty cluster at this moment in time. So we can see as we scroll down we've got some disks attached to each of the hosts um, and we'll actually see that for the QA cluster object I also have a couple of CSV volumes associated with the cluster. So at the moment we're in a situation where I have virtual machines running running on one or two of those Hyper-V hosts and they're just using directly attached storage so there's no high availability option um, even though they're running on a node in a cluster. So from a real world point of view you, know, you could start with a single Hyper-V host you then get to the point that you want to put some high availability into the solution you can build a cluster uh, by adding a second host, a Hyper-V host to that environment and installing the clustering software. Obviously we've got some shared storage at that point and we can then basically migrate our environment across. So as normal you can see that we have the two CSV volumes under the cluster storage folder inside the file system on drive C. So standard cluster configuration, nothing special about that at all. So if we just go to Hyper-V2, HV2, and open up the Hyper-V Manager, we will see that we've just got some virtual machines uh, in that environment. So I've just got a save machine here, which I'm just going to start, because this is the machine that I'm actually going to demonstrate. So hopefully this machine will be up in a few seconds, and it's this machine I will turn from being effectively a standalone Hyper-V host, or Hyper-V virtual machine, into a protected cluster. Hyper-V virtual machine. So we can see the virtual machine is running so obviously everything's fine from that point of view. So if we switch back into server manager and actually go into the failover cluster tool what we'll do is we'll now make that virtual machine highly available. Now one of the other things that's changed with Windows Server 2012 is I don't need to shut that machine down. I can make that machine highly available while it's running so again, this is all part of that zero downtime uh, model that we're trying to achieve. So we can see my two Hyper-V hosts are in a cluster. If we go and have a look at the disks, again, you can see those two disks, uh, the clustered shared volumes that I showed you just now. And you see in the details panel at the bottom, they're both empty. So there's no content, content on there at all. So we'll actually switch to the role section. You can see no virtual machines are actually made highly available in the role section. So we'll actually use the highly, highly available wizard to create a new role. So standard procedure, nothing special here. We're just going to scroll down in the select role box to select Hyper-V virtual machine. So there we go. And it will then hopefully go out, list the virtual machines that are available across my two hosts. So we've got that virtual machine that I just started just now, which is running. So this is the bit that I couldn't do under 2008R2. I've just selected it, and I'm now just going to complete the wizard to make it highly available. Now you'll notice once the wizard completes, I will get a warning actually on the report screen. So if we press the view report button and get the, the report up, we will actually see here a big sort of block of yellow and effectively what this is telling me is this virtual machine does not uh, uh, um, store its VHD files on shared storage so even though I've made it highly available it doesn't actually s support high availability because if host two, Hyper-V host 2 failed then host 1 couldn't run the virtual machine because of its storage. So we now need to move its storage. 
So I've just switched back to the Hyper-V Manager just to show you that if I try to use the Move tool in the Hyper-V Manager, uh, the system stops me. It says you can't do that because this virtual machine is now clustered. So my choice is either to use the Move Storage command, uh, PowerShell command. Alternatively, I can use the Move function actually within the Cluster Management Console. So I've selected Move from the menu and I've chosen the Hyper-V Cluster Console. So it actually shows me all the resources that are associated with that virtual machine. So I can now explore on the left hand side my two clustered shared volumes and I can effectively decide where I'd like to put all of those individual components. So I can migrate them all into the same folder just by dragging the virtual machine down and putting it into the box at the right at the bottom. Or if I wanted to put different, different locations I could have dragged each file individually into whatever folder that I wanted. So having now uh, saved that by pressing OK, that should actually go and start uh, a, a move. So as we can now see, we now see that it says starting virtual machine storage migration. So we can see that status reflected in the cluster management tool. We can also, also see that status reflected inside the Hyper-V management tool as well. So all the tools are showing the same state as far as the machine is concerned. So obviously we're now moving the storage to the cluster shared volume. Once that movement of the, of the VHD files is complete, then the machine would be fully highly available as you would expect it to be normally. So I could, have, I could use this technique either for moving virtual machines uh, storage from one LUN to another. So maybe I'm running out of space on a particular LUN, I need to redistribute the load, whatever the requirements might be. Or in this instance, obviously I'm using this so I can actually take um, virtual machines which are on a node in a cluster but are not highly available. So I've made the virtual machine highly available and I've moved the virtual machine's VHD files to an area of shared storage so the virtual machine can become highly available. And all of this with no downtime with it within the solution at all. So obviously this is going to take a little while to go and complete just down to the, the, the size of the systems that I've got. I've got no uh, posh SAN unfortunately. So we'll speed this up slightly and then come back once the migration is finished. Having now completed the storage migration Hopefully what we can see now, if we go into the settings for the virtual machine, is the fact that the virtual machine storage has been moved to another location. So hopefully into the settings, if we come down to the uh, IDE controller in this case, we can now see the store moved to the clustered shared volume. So we can see that's all happened. Um, how long it takes is obviously completely dependent to the, on the speed of your storage how big the VHD files are and obviously what the current activity is going on in the system. Again if we go into the storage move tool you can actually see again obviously it's on the cluster shared volume if I wanted to just as an example I'm now actually initiating a move to actually move it from one cluster shared volume to another cluster shared volume inside the cluster. So I'm actually using this really on the first scenario that I described where you're using this to rearrange the distribution of virtual machines on your central storage purely to maybe distribute load or maybe you're running out of space um, in one SAN and you need to migrate virtual machines between SANs for example to actually move them from one location to another. One of my other videos that will be coming shortly over the next week or two will actually talk about offload data transfer. An offload data transfer is the technology that we have which actually allows us to move files within a SAN or between SANs without actually occurring the network hit of copying the data across the network. So look forward to that one and that will show you actually how these storage moves can be performed again far far quicker. So we're just connected to the virtual machine and obviously the storage migrations going on in the background so you know, in terms of just connecting to tools like Server Manager there is a, a small overhead and again all this is running on just a, a, a machine so my uh, uh, machine is getting swamped by disk I.O. quite substantially. I don't have a, an infrastructure which has got a, a big SAN sitting behind it. My SAN is just a virtual machine. So as we can see that 
migrations are just you know, on the verges of completing. So what we'll do is we'll um, just leave it there again and let the uh, uh, migration complete. The storage migration is just coming to an end now, so we should hopefully see that finish. There we go. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it's been useful for you. Please look at some of my others and some of my new videos coming shortly. Thank you.